People walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Our service this morning begins on page 355 in the Book of Common Prayer. <clears throat> Today we celebrate the second Sunday of our Advent season. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be His kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. And, and also with you. you. Let us pray. Merciful God, who sent your messengers, the prophets, to preach repentance and prepare the way for our salvation, give us grace to heed their warnings and forsake our sins, that we may greet with joy the coming of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of our scriptures. Truth 
Prepare the way of the Lord. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Although I think people really jump the gun and start too early on Christmas decorations these days, and of course now uh, they start even at the Halloween season. Mm. <laughs> I do love to spot out the Christmas lights that people put out every year. When the boys were younger, we used to wait for the commercial appeal to come out with their must-see, best-decorated homes list with Christmas lights. We would gather the recommended house addresses along with those we had heard from our friends, and then we would put together an itinerary for the annual car tour. <laughs> the annual car tour of Christmas decorations throughout the city. It was so much fun. I remember Edie used to uh, uh, fix us a thermos of hot chocolate. <laughs> and we would make various stops and see the sights and have our hot chocolate. I think for the kids it was mostly about the hot chocolate. <laughs> Funny thing though, in all of my Christmas light excursions, I have never seen a display of John the Baptist. <laughs> have you? Yeah. Thinking of the many beautiful Christmas cards that I have seen and received over the years, I don't remember a single card that had the image of John the Baptist. I especially love those Christmas cards that have the sacred images of the Blessed Mother holding the Christ child were often found in classic art. Or the beautiful sketches of the nativity scene with all the farm animals looking adoringly at the baby Jesus. Or the image of the three stately wise men bearing gifts while watching a heavenly star. But no, John the Baptist. I guess I can understand why. The image of a hairy, camel hair clothed, wild looking guy in a desert with a sign or a caption that says, prepare the way of the Lord, repent, just doesn't quite fit our tradition of Christmas past or present. An image of John the Baptist, unkept, unshaven, walking barefoot and offering locusts dipped in honey as an appetizer would be Martha Stewart's worst nightmare. <laughs> this wild man in the wilderness motif will just not do, will not work, especially at Christmas. So what does John the Baptist have to do with Christmas? Well, for Mark, everything. The Gospel of Mark begins with the theme of preparation. The primary focus of Advent. While Matthew and Luke began with the birth narratives of the Nativity, Mark goes straight to the message of the good news by focusing on the messenger, the forerunner that is preparing the way for Christ the Messiah. In fact, our gospel begins, as we heard it this morning, this is the beginning of the gospel of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. The Christian church has given John the Baptist an important role in the preparation 
for the coming of Christ. Throughout the centuries, the church has recognized Mark's contribution of John the Baptist as a part of the Advent season in preparation of the celebration of the Christ child, Christmas. John the Baptist is introducing the world and also to us a new beginning in Christ. Beyond the creation of the primal elements of the universe and the habitations of earth, our island home, there is the coming of Christ who brings a new creation, a new kingdom, and the Holy Spirit that creates new human hearts. In order to receive the coming of Christ, John the Baptist invites us to get ready and to prepare ourselves for the coming of Christ. John first invites us into the symbolic wilderness. The wilderness is not just a geographical place. It is a place where people get back in touch with God, with His presence, where God lives. It is where we can, as the psalmist says, be still and know that I am God. <laughs> John the Baptist and God invite us to a place without the many distractions in this world today. Especially currently, there are many distractions during this season. Getting those lights up. Going through the Christmas card list, sending Christmas cards out, all those presents to buy, the Christmas parties to attend. My own schedule almost looks like a war board of all the activities that I have during the month of December. John calls us into the wilderness to step away from all the distractions and the temptations that may keep us from our true focus on receiving Him, on receiving the Christ child, the true meaning of Christmas. The wilderness is any place where a person may become absorbed in the powerful presence of God. The wilderness may be found in a spiritual book, in your meditations, in the stillness of prayer, in a thin wafer and a taste of wine that we will have later on this morning, most certainly in the act of helping someone in need or wherever the cross of Jesus is invisibly present. The cross is not something that ended at the end of the ministry of Jesus. John the Baptist and Jesus lived in the shadow of the cross. And John is asking us to join Jesus in the way of the cross, where we learn to gain purpose and meaning and ultimate significance in our lives through repentance and following him. John calls us into the wilderness to hear the message of repentance. To repent is to change your mind. Uh, I, I love these translations. Change your mind. It means to turn away. And my most favorite, to let go. To repent is to let go of something. To repent is also to turn away from and also, perhaps, to turn towards something. To turn towards something. Especially during this season, we are called to turn away from the many distractions and any hindrances that keep us from the focus of God. And then to turn toward the preparation of His coming. John the Baptist said, prepare the way of the Lord. Make His path straight. Great, as we also read in Isaiah. 
We prepare the way of the Lord by turning away, letting go, or avoiding the many distractions that clutter a straight path to God's presence. Clear the clutter. John the Baptist calls us to repent or to turn away anything that clutters the journey of our life toward a deeper relationship with God. The gospel reading today is certainly about preparation, a fitting thing for Advent. During this season of Advent and Christmas, let us prepare to accept and celebrate the coming of the Christ child. Prepare by preparing our hearts through self-examination and, yes, repentance, changing our ways to glorify God. May we prepare the way of the Lord by making room for Him in our lives and in our hearts. Let us prepare the way of the Lord by cleaning up the clutter in our spiritual pathways and in our hearts. Let every heart prepare him room. May it be so with us, especially this season. Amen. 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 Now stand and say together the Nicene Creed. The Nicene Creed is found on page 358 in the Book of Common Prayer. The Creed is the outline of our Christian faith. Together, we believe in one God.
people. Form 3 can be found in your bulletin. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. Remembering especially Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Pope Francis of the Roman Church, Michael, our presiding bishop, the bishops and ministers of the Episcopal Church and the Anglican community, Phoebe, our bishop, and Father Terry Arthur. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. Remember, especially Joe, our president, Bill, our governor, and all mayors of Shelby County and the surrounding areas. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Remembering especially Elena, Susan, Jane, Ray, Doug, Robin, Larry, Robert, John, the Wagner family, Holly, and the Sladen family. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest, especially to Elvis Sladen. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. In the Diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for the Holy Trinity Memphis. We pray for the West Tennessee Haiti Partnership Mission. We pray for the Village Mission in Liberia, Africa. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We pray for the peace among all nations. Yes. We pray for the peace of our own nation. Yes. We pray for the protection and comfort of all those who have served this country in foreign and domestic lands, especially Trevor Holly, Rachel Miller, and Jacob Stevens. We pray for Christians that are being persecuted throughout the world. The altar flowers are given to the glory of God by the Shelton family in honor of their wedding anniversary. Let us pray for all members of our parish family celebrating a birthday, especially Dwayne Carter and Jane Janet Smith. Let us pray for all members of our parish family celebrating an anniversary this week. Let us pray for our own needs and those of us. Continue to pray for the conflict in the Middle East, especially between Israel and the Palestinians. We pray for those suffering from the devastation of false lives. We pray for restoration, healing, and peace. We also pray for the country of Ukraine. We pray for those affected and suffering from the violence in our own country. Amen. 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 We also give thanks for all the blessings in this life. Amen. 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 O Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls. 
And to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us now confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Our confession can be found on page 360 in the Book of Common Prayer. 360. <clears throat> Together. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and do not repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us. That we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Forgive you all of your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you into eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And I also be with you. Peace, everyone. Peace. Peace. Uh, 
uh, it'll be our primary service with uh, music at 10.30 and then 4, which is different from Christmas Eve. So come to Advent 4 and come back for <laughs> our Christmas Eve service. No excuse now that we're starting earlier. You can still get everything in the oven. And if you've got guests coming, invite them to church. The greatest gift to be give them, probably. We want to invite you to pick up uh, our new liturgical calendars. Uh, that is our, uh, in a sense, our Christmas card to the uh, parish. Uh, they will be, uh, uh, you'll have access to those in the back of the church in the narthex and also in the foyer. The liturgical calendars, of course, uh, helps to remind us of our liturgical year that we practice, including the colors and why we have the colors uh, but we do, this church and, and, uh, uh, and other churches uh, live by the liturgical calendar. It's such a wonderful gift to the church to give us the cadence uh, of our uh, spiritual worship and mindful of spiritual things. Pick up, we have, a, we have one calendar per family, so uh, please pick that up. Our adult education continues. What an interesting study it is uh, as we look at uh, the uh, classic tale of Scrooge, uh, the Dickens uh, story. And we're looking at uh, uh, ways that uh, Jesus' teachings uh, can be found. And they're almost obvious since Dickens did not hide the fact that it's a Christian story. Uh, so please join us. Uh, we just have one more session left, but come come join us for Advent 4, 3, 4. <laughs> this time is just, I mean, yeah, okay. It is Advent 3, okay. I'm so confused. <laughs> well, because in our book, we're a Sunday morning. <laughs> Also, uh, as you pick up your liturgical calendar, if you haven't done so already, uh, pick up your new daily breads. Uh, they are out, I think, December and January and February issue. And the new uh, winter issue of our Anglican Digest. I just love the Anglican Digest. Uh, actually, both. But I like the Anglican Digest because it uses some of our own uh, Episcopal language. as well as, I know Margaret uses the Ford Movement, which is also a wonderful meditation. A reminder, uh, there might be a few slots left, but our altar flower sign-up list is on the bulletin board. Uh, so please, if you want to dedicate uh, a uh, particular Sunday with the altar flowers, uh, sign up for those. Also, the Poinsettias uh, sign-up list is on the bulletin board. Please uh, continue your support and contribution to making our altar on Christmas Eve so beautiful. Both of those sign-up sheets are on the bulletin board. A reminder that the bishop's visit is uh, the end of January, and so for those who are especially, those who are interested in confirmation, I really need to know that because we need to have some preparation before her visit. Only the bishop can confirm. Uh, so if you miss out on that visit, you'll have to follow her around somewhere else <laughs> or wait next year. But I encourage you that if you're thinking about that, if it's that time for you to let me know. Also, if you're interested in joining the church officially, you've been thinking about it, maybe coming for a while, it'd be a wonderful time for you to do that in time for the bishop's visit. Do we have any birthday celebrations today? Do we have any anniversary celebrations today? Father Terry, we have one more announcement. Okay. The men's club, we've been announcing several weeks on the road now to make sure that everyone has the opportunity.
opportunity to hear. Uh, the men's club will be meeting at 6.30 at the Olympic Steak and Pizza on Marlington Road this Thursday, 6.30. All men in our congregation are invited. We'll get together, share dinner together. So please come. This time, I'd like to invite the uh, daughters of the king and the two candidates to please come up uh, for their induction ceremony. Two candidates, by the way, is Brendan Mitchell and Pamela. It is the privilege of the St. Mary, St. Martha chapter to present Pamela Wilburn Malone and Brenda Mitchell as candidates for the membership in the Order of the Daughters of the King. We are gathered here in the sight of God and before this congregation to admit these women into the Order of the Daughters of the King. We commend them to your earnest prayers that they may have grace to fulfill the obligations of the order and that their labors may be to the glory of God and to the welfare of all his people. <clears throat> Candidates, the Daughters of the King is an order for women whose mission is the extension of Christ's kingdom, especially among women and girls through prayer service and evangelism do you desire to become a member of the order of the daughters of the king I do. do you promise to obey faithfully the two rules of the order the rule of prayer and the rule of service do offer to offer your support to the clergy for the good of the parish and the extension of Christ's kingdom to wear faithfully the cross of the order and to work for its purposes as God may give you the opportunity. I do it with God's help. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, I receive and admit you as members of the Order of the Daughters of the King. Now, I'm addressing the congregation as you see them here. It is a question of support. Will you support these women in their ministry of prayer and service? We will. We will. I bless these crosses in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Members 
accept and wear faithfully the cross of the order, remembering the words of our Lord Jesus, take up your cross and follow me. Jerry, I want to thank you for allowing me to speak today. Oh, thank you. And also, St. Philip parishioners, thank you so much for your encouragement and support and prayers while I was ill. Yeah. Um, yeah. With the bone infection or what they call osteomyelitis, uh, I could not have done it without all of you, and I felt your love all the way. And it's helped me rally around to where I am now, so thank you. 
Um, and now I'm going to delve into how St. Philip impacted mine and Joey's lives. I grew up in Jackson, Tennessee. My family and I were members of a small United Methodist Church, very similar to this dear St. Philip's family. It was a loving, caring church, just like St. Philip's is. When I moved to Memphis, I drove often to Jackson, and at times, when the tree leaves were just right, I could catch a glimpse of St. Philip's from the interstate. <laughs> <laughs> I was intrigued, and I was curious and enamored by the white, beautiful church with the tall red doors. Never in a million years did I imagine, or even after Joey and I first married, that we would become members of this beautiful church community. Then life circumstances changed, and that led us to become involved with you all in this endearing community. Both Joey and I feel reverence, love, warmth, fellowship, and joy of St. Philip parishioners. Moreover, it seems pretty much like my church where I grew up as a child. That Methodist and Episcopal kind of same. They are Methodist very similar. In some ways. Yeah. Yes. And also, it reminded Joey of the reverence that he felt growing up in a Catholic church. Yes, that's right. So it was a great combination for us both. A compromise, I think. Yeah. <laughs> a good one. It was, but it was a lovely, oh. great compromise. Um, the warmth and joy we found here at St. Mills uh, Phillips has moved us, charged us, and inspired us in our giving. Hmm. And even more specifically, giving in many ways, just not monetarily. Our giving is essential to a perfect equation for living a true and biblical instruction and teaching. Yes. And as you know, our church body is uniquely blessed with many awesome parishioners, and you are extremely talented with all of your personal gifts mm. from God. And we have, of course, Father Terry, who also that we have to give many thanks to. His um, teachings with biblical principles, that he discusses in giving sermons, um, they provided passion for better living for all of us. I'm sure you agree with that. Mm -hmm. Living more thoughtful, God-inspired lives. In turn, we've been encouraged to extend our hand to those in need, reaching out to those with less. It has been pivotal for Joey and me. I recently read a quote, and after reading it, I said, this is definitely our church. The quote goes like this, if you're more fortunate than others, build a longer table, not a taller fence. Ah, I like that. Joey and I are very fortunate to be members of this St. Philip's table, and we feel like that table is miles long. Oh. And there is no fence. Yes. We, we're truly happy to be a part of this sweet community, and I am happy to acknowledge and celebrate the 2024 Stewardship Campaign, giving in grace with our full commitment. Thank you. Patty <laughs> said, this is not my comfort zone. <laughs> but then she did good. And she did that. For you all, for this church, maybe a little bit for the priest, but <laughs> but thank you for that. Yes. Well, we've heard um, parishioners share uh, out of uh, their own health concerns, uh, and what a blessing this church has been. For those that are uh, suffering through a health crisis, like Monica Vaughn, uh, heartfelt sharing. Also, uh, Dwight Wagner uh, shared this morning how so important it was uh, during this time of his loss and grief that he had a this parish family uh, to be so committed to him, his family, to Gay, the love that he felt, the support. Uh, I mean, you know, how do you pay for a price of admission to that? Uh, so uh, a parish can be there in times of uh, trouble, in times of sorrow, uh, 
and also in times of, of growth and transformation. Uh, good to also come to a place where we not only receive consolation, but also that we can be assured of growth and transformation. That's a very important word for us as, uh, as Christians. So, uh, thank you, Pat. And please do continue uh, to give generously during this time of uh, giving, stewardship. I want to also acknowledge, as we uh, said in our prayers of the people, that uh, Eva Slater, Slayton. Slayton, I'm sorry, passed away uh, this, this week. She had been ill for quite some time. Saturday morning. One is never uh, ready. Sunday morning about 5 o'clock. No, Saturday morning. Saturday morning at 5 o'clock. Okay, that's right. Now my days run, <laughs> run, run together. But of course, uh, uh, she she was the mother of Sandy and and uh, the mother-in-law of uh, Frank and also uh, Sandy's sister Janet was here and fortunately family were gathered around at her passing uh, I, I was able to be there uh, on Thursday to uh, give communion and also, uh, I perceived that last rites was in order, and so we also did that. Thanks be to God. The Spirit moved, and, and we listened. Uh, so please keep this family uh, in your prayers. Uh, and we've got, uh, in spite of the fact that we also have been grieving and still grieving over Gay Wagner, we've got the heart and the energy and the love to grieve for you as well and support you in any way that we can. Thank you, Sam. Remember the words of our Lord Jesus. It is more blessed to give and to give of yourselves, like we just saw Patty do, than to receive.
right spirit within me. O Lord my God.
in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you into everlasting life. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation.
Christ, the bread of heaven. Become what you have received. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of body and blood. Send us down to the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and face upon you and be gracious to you. May he turn his countenance upon you and bring you peace. And may the blessings of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you for the rest of this Sabbath day, for your upcoming week, during our great Advent season, and forevermore.